It seems really, really complicated, but in reality, it's actually pretty simple. Psych, I'm just playing. This thing is mad complicated. Hey, what up, y'all? Mr. Cruz here, your friendly neighborhood producer, back with another video. And in today's video, I'm gonna take you guys through this new drum sequencer plugin that I've recently found out about called Playbeat 3. Playbeat 3 is a drum sequencer. This is uh, an example of it right here. It seems really, really complicated, but in reality, it's actually pretty simple. Psych, I'm just playing. This thing is mad complicated. But good luck for you guys. I tore through the manual inside and out, and I'm gonna show you guys how you can use this to make quicker drum samples and quicker drum loops. So for starters um the play B, even though it looks pretty complicated, like on the user interface here, I'm gonna explain to you what all these things are. If you've used any kind of drum sequencer or drum pattern maker plugin before in the past or anything like that, then this will actually be really simple and really familiar with you. And I'm gonna just show you how you can access the same features that you're used to and you're accustomed to in play B. I'm gonna actually erase this whole pattern that I have here. And I'll take you guys through how to make a drum pattern and how it'll actually make it a lot easier for you to make drum patterns. To begin with, we're gonna go click right here because this is kind of what it opens up to as default, but I kind of got my settings that I had saved. Uh, over here is where you have your drum samples. So you're given a couple of packs um, and there's actually, I think, some free ones on their website. This is by Audio Modern. The cool thing about it is that you can drag and drop samples into here pretty easily and pretty seamlessly. Me personally, the way that I did this one is I actually opened up a separate uh, drum organizer plugin that I have, and then I just picked my samples, dragged them in there, bam, seamless. And of course, you get eight different slots that you can use, which is actually more than enough to be able to make something popping. Another awesome thing that they have here is this randomize button. With this randomize feature, what you can do is you can actually lock certain uh, drum samples that you have here. And when you hit randomize, it'll pick a different sound based off of whatever's inside that folder. So if you have a certain hi-hat folder that has nothing but hi-hat samples in it, or if you just bought a new drum kit and then that drum kit has you know, a folder for kicks, snares, hi-hats, claps, and you only wanna switch out the clap, when you drop your sample in here and hit randomize, it'll only cycle through the clap sounds or the hi-hat sounds that are in that exact folder. To test this out here, uh, I'm gonna pick this snare right here and I'm gonna lock everything else. So now when, it, when I hit cycle or when I hit randomize, it'll pick a different sound, but it won't swap out sounds for the ones that I have locked here. So hit random here. Now, of course, you see that I had locked all of them. So each one of these different slots has this randomized feature, but if you wanted to select, um, let's say I wanted to swap out this snare and my kick. So now with everything else locked in, when I hit randomize all, it'll only swap out the sounds for those two things. But I have a problem with one of my samples in there, so I'm not even gonna worry about that. Or if you don't like it and you wanna go back to a couple samples that you have previously found, you just hit uh, undo and it'll undo whatever you just randomized. All right, so I wanted to show you guys that first because this is probably the only time I've ever seen that incorporated into an actual drum machine plugin or drum loop maker plugin. Let's get onto the good stuff. So here is where I have my sequencer. And of course, all of my corresponding uh, drum samples are lined up here according through one through eight. I don't think I used eight, so we're gonna actually gonna go ahead and uh, mute or lock that one just so that we know we have not used it. Up here, you have a couple of different options as far as what windows you guys can see. So right now we're in the the steps window and a cool thing about play B is that whole randomized feature that we just used with our drum samples you can actually use that same feature with a lot of different parameters inside of play B so click right here under step this is my step window so what we're gonna start out doing is building out a drum pattern so let's start I usually like to start out with my snares if I forget what sample that I initially dropped in here I can just click it and then it'll tell me the name of the sample right up here I can also edit my sample so let's say if I wanted to have um, if I wanted to cut it out or if I wanted to fade out a little bit more or fade in, I can do all that, those things here. Kind of like a little bit of a ADSR mode here. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna start out with my stare. I know I usually like it right there. Let's click play. All right, next thing up, I wanna do my hi-hat. So let's do my hi-hat right here and I usually wanna fill up every single space that I have right there. I wanna fill all of them out because I just wanted to steady. And then let's go ahead and do our kick pattern. So let's do boom, boom, pop, boom, pop. Let 
money. Look, super simple that we just made something that sounds pretty awesome. And we're going to actually be able to touch up a couple of other things to really spice it up here. So this is all in steps pattern. So here's the really cool thing with these randomized features that Playbeat has that gives it the advantage over other drum sequencers is with the randomized feature. What I could do is let's say, for example, I really like my hi-hat. I want to keep it the way it is, but I kind of want to experiment with my kick and snare pattern. So I'm going to lock my hi-hat there. And then with the kick and snare, uh, I can kind of have them. Well, let's select all of them right now because I can only do one channel at a time. So I'm going to select all, but I have my hi-hat locked. So with my hi-hat locked, I'm going to be able to click this randomize button here and it's going to change the pattern for what I already have here to something different. So here's where I can control how random that pattern will be. So with fix, I'm gonna select it over to fix right here. Um, I see that with my kick, actually let's just do my kick alone. With my kick, I have one, two, three different hits. So if I select fix, it will automatically create four hits where my kick is hitting uh, and it'll randomize the placement of those. So let's go ahead and hit this and you'll see now I have four and if I hit it again, I hit it again, I hit it again. So no matter what, it's only gonna randomize four different hits for my kick. If I switch this over, now here I have a min max button. So I can have that randomized to where at the minimum, it'll randomize three different hits and at the maximum, it'll randomize four. So if I had bumped this up to like 10, now I can have three to 11 different instances where that kick is hitting within this, what this uh, four measure pattern. With something like that, you really have an endless amount of possibilities that you can kind of randomize this pattern in order to, you know, spark some creativity if you're ever having like beat block or something. Because I, what I want to do is I want to try to get Playbeat to do the work for me. I don't want to have to work as hard. If it can do most of the job or all of the job for me, great. Next up, we have density. Uh, density is kind of where you get those triplet hi-hat feels. So I am i don't really use this for my kicks. I only really use it for the hi-hat here. I think it sounds much better for hi-hat, especially if you randomize it. So what I'm gonna do here is, let's say I have my hi-hat pattern already built out where I'm having it hit every 1 16th of a measure. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this lock feature up here. So with the lock feature, I'm gonna select most of the hi-hats that I have. So now when I hit the randomize button here for hi-hats, I don't have to have this locked. I'm only locking the actual um, the actual hits or the actual notes. Anything that is not locked in now has the opportunity or has the chance of being randomized according to density. The other thing is here we have the steps and what the steps will do is whatever number is selected here, that will tell me how many um, unselected or unlocked notes that we have hit will be randomized according to density. So I'm gonna bump it up maybe to four so that we can potentially get one, two, three, four, some more of these in here randomized. All right, so now randomize two of those. Let's see what we have now. So I like this one here. I'm gonna lock that one and then we're gonna hit it again. Right there, I like it, it sounds fire. And then of course you can do the same thing with pitch. I'm not gonna go in detail to this because um, you're kind of getting the idea of what we have as far as what these randomized buttons do and how Playbeat can spice up a drum pattern that you create and just make it like a little bit better. Pitch, you can do the same thing. Flam, if you don't know what flam is, that's kind of like where you hit one note right before you hit the actual note. Um, so like they usually do it a lot with snares. I usually do it a lot with snares, that's just how I do. I mean, I don't really hear a lot of people talking about how they flam their snares and you know music production but I do that and then you could do the same with volume and with pan and the really cool thing about this is that like you not only have the ability to randomize your pattern but you have the ability to randomize aspects of your pattern so you can randomize the pitch of your hi-hats I do pitch hi-hats all the time and you can control the amount of randomization so that it doesn't just sound crazy and out of place. And lastly, the thing that we have up here is this huge random button. So what this huge randomize button will do is it'll completely randomize everything. Um, when you click this, you have the opportunity to not only randomize the pattern, but it'll randomize the sample. And in this case, it'll randomize the sample with perhaps something that is not inside of that folder. So you might end up having a snare that is now replaced with a percussion sound or a shaker sound. Your kick might now be replaced with a hi-hat sound. Now, I don't use this super often. I would rather stick with the 
specific and the minute randomization features. Um, I don't use this very much at all, but it's still there if you wanted to. On this one right here, what this one will do is it'll create a pattern that is similar to the pattern that you already have in there. That's another feature that Playbeat has over other sequencers. It has a really sophisticated algorithm, AI system, robot person living inside of it that will not only create a pattern, but it'll create a randomly new pattern that is similar to something that you've already created. So let's test this out here. All right, I wanna make sure that I have all selected unless you only wanna impact a, a certain channel. So all selected, I'm gonna hit random, so there, bam, it randomized it. It's kind of similar. Notice that my hi-hats are all staying the same. I don't know about those ones. Yo, I mean, that kind of sounds wild, but still, you get the idea. So there you guys go, a quick little overview of Playbeat. Now, I'm actually using Playbeat right now in its standalone app. This does come as a VST if you do get it as a VST, um, but it's also available on iOS. So if you're just like, want to cook up something on your iPad real quick, you can do that. But as a standalone app, I like this better than making loops or making drum patterns inside of FL because this minimizes my CPU usage. It doesn't take as long to load as FL does. Um, and it allows me to create things with a quickness. So often I don't want to have to dig through samples and folders and all this other stuff and you know switch back between playlists and regions and whatnot in order to create a drum loop that I've just come up with in my head. I wanna be able to flesh that pattern out with a quickness and then move on to the next thing. Playbeat gives me that opportunity. So if you guys are interested, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to Playbeat if you guys wanna go ahead and check it out. I would definitely encourage you guys to check it out. Not only is it super quick, but it's really simple once you kind of get the hang of it and once you kind of understand that this is very similar to every other drum sequencer that I've ever used before. Well, that's what I got for you guys. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of Playbeat 3. Also, let me know in the comments, what was your first drum sequencer or drum machine that you ever messed with, that you learned how to make drums on? For me, it was Reason's Redrum. That thing was the very first drum sequencer that I ever used, and it really taught me a lot about how to make drum patterns. If you feel like you learned something, definitely hit that like button. Also, once you're done making those beats, head on over to BeatStars. Hit the link in my description. If you use my code CRU230, I'm going to hook you up with your first month of BeatStars completely for free. BeatStars is a stellar platform, not just for producers, but for musicians as well. So hit the link in the description, head on over, and go join me. Outside of that, it's your boy, Mr. Cruz. Out. <laughs>